I remember it very clearly. The, uh, the day was cloudy. At 10.15, it was still dark here in December when Readout came out of a 25-year slumber and erupted explosively. It had the most violent eruption of the initial stages of the eruption, and it put an ash cloud up that was propelled to the north. At that same time, there was a KLM 747 jet that was en route from the Netherlands on approach into Anchorage, and it was about 100 miles away. It was at about 25,000 feet. And again, it was dark. They didn't see it. No one told them that, that the volcano had erupted, and they basically flew right into this ash cloud. When airplanes fly through a volcanic ash cloud, they can ingest uh, the particles of ash, which is basically just pieces of volcanic glass. And when those get ingested into turbine engines, uh, they can melt and then cause that engine to, to stop functioning. And all four engines ingested this fine particles of ash, which then melted and then recooled onto the turbine blades of, of the engine and basically shut the plane down. So that was at 25,000 feet. And so for the next eight minutes, the plane was dark, silent, and basically f falling or gliding steeply from the sky as the pilots desperately tried to get these engines started. We're in the ops room or the operations room for the Alaska Volcano Observatory. So this is where during a volcanic event, data come in, phone calls come in, and we put out information to folks about what's going on with the volcano. And there were 241 people on this flight, and of course they were all terrified not only the cockpit, but the inside of the plane didn't fill up with ash, but there was a lot of ash in the air, and so and, and people didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what had happened. And so for eight terrifying minutes, this plane was basically falling out of the sky. And at about 13,000 feet, they were able to restart all four engines. This is after having dropped out of the ash cloud. They were about 6,500 feet above the terrain, so they'd fallen very dangerously close to the Alaska range. And they limped this plane on into Anchorage 38 minutes later and landed. Everyone was safe, but there were, it was $80 million damage done to a $140 million aircraft. All four engines had to be replaced, all the avionics, all the interior wiring, and it abraded all of the windward leading edges, completely glossed the front window of the plane. With and it was a very terrifying experience for these 241 people. It was a really close call. M much of our funding for the next 15 or 20 years has been related to that one incident. So airborne ash is really the biggest hazard, and it's a hazard for two reasons. Uh, one, because it can cause ash fall on very distant communities, tens or hundreds of kilometers from the volcano, but then also very importantly because it can have very detrimental effects on aircraft flying through airborne ash. Uh, so, I mean, our mission says that we will give timely uh, warning of either impending eruptions or eruptions in progress. But, but when it comes down to it, what we're really trying to do is to keep airplanes and ash away from each other.